Hello and welcome, trolls. And you know it's a safe place to be on a E3 2018 weekend uh, here at Joe Friend of Trolls. And we're going to dive into the first showcase we saw. Uh, the EA showcase was on the 9th, uh, so hopefully I get this put up put up right in time for you guys to, to see that. And I've, I've put it up uh, with some wonderful background of some Titanfall gameplay that I recorded before before I got into these showcases. So uh, without further ado, I'm going to talk about some of the things that we saw at the showcase in case you missed it and give you some of my opinions on the things that that went down at the showcase. Uh, first off, uh, we saw some extra Battlefield 5 footage. They released a trailer a few weeks ago, uh, but they showed some extra gameplay footage. Uh, they said all of it was captured in-game engines. So that was pretty pretty cool to see. Um, they also did announce that uh, Battlefield 5 would have a Battle Royale section. <laughs> So if you're into that, uh, congratulations. Battlefield 5 is the newest newest game to have that added on to it as well. Uh, they did a bunch of sports stuff. They did uh, FIFA 19, uh, Champions League, if you're familiar with what that is. I have no idea and I, I don't care to know. They updated FIFA 18 and uh, it's going to be free to play on EA Access. And then they also have a new EA Access Origins, no, EA Origins Access Premier, uh, which is supposed to have a catalog of uh, 100, 100 plus games, EA games that they, they have on there. And I'm not a huge, huge fan of that idea. Basically, I, I mean, I pay a subscription service for the Xbox Live already. I guess, you know, that would be paying a subscription service for the games themselves. So I'm not super on board with it, but... Uh, I'm not, not against seeing, seeing how it could be, I guess. And along with uh, FIFA 19, uh, they talked a little bit about NBA Live 2019 and Madden uh, 2019. And then they did this really weird, um, it was like a, a background, you know, American Idol where, you know, poor country, country town girl, you know, growing up in rural America, she comes to the comes to the big city to make her dreams come true. Well, same thing, same thing here, except it was some some kid, uh, some esports thing, where he won a Madden 2018 belt. And he worked really hard, and then he came out on the stage, and uh, a football guy, not a big sports guy, a Pittsburgh Steeler player, I don't remember his name, uh, challenged young young Kev, and they made some really weird, awkward. Uh, Exchanges in regards to getting out there and making that making that money. Now he didn't go to his graduation, so he could play a video game or something along those. It was it was terrible. And what's really funny is I'm I'm excited to see it after all of these showcases come out. Is the cringe compilations because I think that one should have a have a place in in there. The young young Kev or young Kiev and uh, this Pittsburgh Steeler guy. Kind of having a real awkward exchange on stage. I've been good. You still recover from that butt whooping? Wow, already <laughs> starting. Okay. <laughs> Hi, everybody. I'm Juju Smith Schuster from the Pittsburgh Steelers. Um, as you guys can see, king of touchdown celebrations. That's pretty fire. I like that a lot. One game that they announced that looked really cool was Sea of Solitude, and it is slated for uh, early 2019 release. And it's, uh, I don't know, it's just, it's like cell shaded and it's, the way the developer was talking about it, it's, it's based on a person's loneliness and we all have our unique experiences when it comes to loneliness and being alone. And in this world, people manifest that feeling by becoming monsters and changing. And so this girl who's kind of a monster is boating around and uh, it's, it's pretty interesting interesting little little story it, it would seem. I'm really excited about the game. It looks really unique and really interesting. Oh, uh, one of the, the lead developers and the director from Respawn Entertainment, they got down, he was in the audience, and, and the announcer, the MC, she got down really close to him and was like, hey, we've got a huge announcement. And I heard Respawn and I was like, yes! I'm very excited for Titanfall 3. That's kind of the, the only thing I was looking forward to this year, I hope. Hope they'd announce it, but 
alas, it was not Titanfall 3, but it was a Star Wars game. Uh, the, the, not the last Jedi, it was uh, Jedi Fallen Order. And so they, they announced that, that that was going to be coming out. Wahoo for Star Wars fans. I really want to see that, that Titanfall 3, though. That, the first two were so good. They announced a bunch of updates, or that they were going to be updating or continue updating Star Wars Battlefront 2, and it was kind of, kind of interesting because when they were talking about Star Wars Battlefront 2, the developer, designer, whoever it was they had on stage talking about it was like, yeah, you know, we kind of, we kind of made a few mistakes when it came to the loot boxes, and so they. They ate a little bit of crow, which was kind of nice to see. And then later on, when they were talking about Anthem, and when it it comes out, they were talking about not duplicating those same mistakes for Anthem, which was it is going to be very nice. I hope they kind of keep the word. They did talk about some some loot box stuff for Anthem, not loot box, but uh, there were cosmetic purchases. There was no no random. You don't know what you're going to get out of this loot box. It was hey, this is what you're going to get. And you can you can pay extra for it if you want, but it's all going to be cosmetic, so that was kind of neat. They announced a new Unravel game, Unravel 2. So I, I played part of the first one, I never beat it, but there's this little yarn character and you, you go around um, kind of using your string that you unravel from yourself to solve puzzles and the like. And this one is going to have a high cooperative experience installed in it so you can play by yourself and play both of the characters or you can play in a co-op fashion and and go about it that way uh, EA been doing something that was kind of kind of hard for me to understand but it's it's called play to give and I guess over the last year they've had they put nine challenges specifically into their game like achievement unlocks or, or things like that that if gamers did there would be a certain amount of money that was donated to charity. And I guess over the course of this, this little campaign, they raised over a million bucks and they contributed them to three different uh, charities, He for She, National Bullying Prevention Center, and uh, Ditch the Label. All of them focused on you know anti-bullying and harassment uh, type, type causes. And so I thought that was pretty cool. Uh, not a game necessarily, but uh, something something pretty interesting that I think they did. And another another game that they introduced there, and they made kind of a big spectacle out of it. They they had a couple uh, RTS players, real time strategy players, come out, and you know I guess these guys are, are real tough shit guys from from the, that genre, and they came out and they had them go head to head on a mobile command and conquer game, uh, command and conquer rivals. And I used to play Command and Conquer back on the PlayStation, and that was—I mean, it was fun. Uh, I haven't played it since, but it—you know—it's a mobile game. It just seems very watered down. Uh, most likely, there's going to be a lot of a lot of different microtransactions that you can have in the game. I mean, I, I just assume because that's that's kind of the way that they roll. But the the Command and Conquer game—they did announce that that was going to be released uh, today, the day of the show, and. The uh, the new Unravel game, Unravel 2, was also going to be released today on June 9th, 2018. So if you're interested in either of those games, you can, you can pick those up presently. We also finally got a release date for Anthem. And so that's going to be released February 22nd, 2019. And I'm looking forward to that. Uh, Hopefully I'll have an Xbox One X by then, uh, and, and I can really experience Anthem how it how it should be experienced. Um, they they did uh, Anthem was kind of the closer. They showed a lot of extra gameplay footage, and they did kind of a Q and A session. And some of, some some of the big takeaways from the Q and A session they they said that Anthem is going to be a single player game. However, it is going to be in a in a shared world so like you have these bases where you go and a lot of the story takes place and then you go into this shared world where a lot of the multiplayer aspects take place and 
with that, that's going to be where the co-op with your friends comes in and all of the dynamic weather and lighting and time and environmental and seasonal changes that go on are going to be reflected in each one of your games. Uh, they also mentioned that they are going to make the story, or they have made the story in such a way that they will be able to support it seamlessly with future updates to add extra story onto it. And so I thought that was also pretty dang pretty dang cool. They did identify, and it may have been identified before already, but there's there's four character classes. The Ranger, which is kind of the average, you know, kind of well-rounded character. The Colossus, which is the tank-style character. And then they've got the, uh, the Interceptor and the Storm characters. Uh, the, and, and again, just to reiterate what they said before about the loot boxes, they said there's going to be no loot boxes, which is awesome. Um, and they said there's going to be no pay for power or pay for additional, you know, oomph. It's all going to be, if you're paying for anything, all of that is going to be cosmetic only. And so I thought that was a, a great move. Overall, uh, for EA, I was not too terribly impressed with the presentation. Uh, of course, it didn't have Titanfall 3 in it, which I was looking forward to. I don't really know what I expected, but as soon as I heard uh, Respawn's name, I was like, ooh, here's the thing that's about to happen. Anyway, that's going to be it for uh, today's video. Um, check back tomorrow. Uh, we've got Bethesda and Microsoft and one other one. I think we've got Sony, maybe. No, uh, Devolver Digital. So check back uh, to see those. If you like the video, leave a like on the video. Uh, subscribe to the channel if you're not already. And we'll see you, see you in the next video. Oh, if you are not watching this uh, so close to E3 and you're watching it all at once, I will hopefully edit all of this into one gigantic video. Uh, but if uh, not, you can check out the next video up here. And I am getting to make it down to E3 this year. My wife bought us tickets, and so we are headed there on the 12th. And so once I have that put up on my other channel, you can check out the vlog of my E3 experience uh, with this, this ticket or this tag up top there. Anyway, check out the next video here, um, and subscribe to the channel, and we'll talk to you, talk to you next, next time. Okay, welcome back, and today we're going to be be talking about the Microsoft, the Xbox showcase at E3. Um, they, after following the, the EA showcase, the Microsoft or Xbox showcase, really, it, it, was, it was filling. It was satisfying in a way that EA just didn't manage to do. There, there were a bunch of announcements that they made. Uh, they started off with uh, Forza, Forza, Forza Horizon 4, and I, I've never been a big fan of the Forza games. My my buddy Scooter, he's a big fan of the Forza games, um, but this one it, it's a shared world, and so and that that was a theme throughout uh, this showcase, and then the showcase that happened right after at the Bethesda showcase as well. This shared world, this online multiplayer thing is they're really really kind of leaning into it a little bit and so this forza horizon 4 uh shared world and and one of the big things with it is uh weather and seasonal uh dynamic changes to the world they they mentioned that you know during the summertime you you drive on this course and you wouldn't be able to go over a lake but then in the winter time the lake would freeze over and so you'd get a drive across the, the lake. So that was that was pretty neat. Uh, one one thing about this game that though I'm not a Forza or a racing fan, I did like the way that they had uh, co-op in this game. And you see somebody online, and you can very quickly uh, there was a one or two button press maneuver, and and you could get uh, right into a game with them, get right into a team chat or a party chat with them. So I thought that was really cool. And hopefully it it's an idea that can be replicated in other games that I do enjoy do enjoy playing. Uh, they showed a, a reveal trailer for Halo 6 or Halo Infinite, I believe it is called. Um, so that was pretty pretty neat to see. Just kind of a, a lot of large large pans. There was a, a warthog going across 
uh, a bumpy road, some soldiers, they dropped a, a flare, lit up some beacons, like like the, the beacons, Gondor requires aid sort of thing. Um, but I, they didn't really show any, any gameplay footage, so I'm assuming that they're going to go with a, a more or larger world approach than the other games as well. I, I didn't play the campaign for Halo 5, but I, I heard it was pretty universally despised. I did enjoy the multiplayer aspects of it, though. The, it was it was rumored that there was going to be a Gears of War 5. I think it's 5. Yeah, Gears of War 5 show up at the showcase, and it did. It made made an appearance there. But, but Gears of War was really a, a big presence there. It, uh, it had... Uh, they did a, a, a Gears pop... Uh, which looked like a, a multiplayer game. It was like with the little, you know, big-headed pop figures. And then there was a Gears Tactics, which was a, a mobile, a mobile game. No, Gears Pop was the mobile game. Gears Tactics was maybe a PC game, but it was like a, a strategy uh, in the vein of like a Final Fantasy Tactics or one of those other uh, top-down kind of tactics games. And then, of course, they announced Gears Five. They showed um, a pretty cool, cool cinematic um, trailer for that, and so that that was pretty exciting. My sister loves the Gears of War franchise. She's going to be very excited for this this Gears Five. A lot of people expected a new Fable to come out of this uh, showcase. There was no new Fable announced, which is kind of a kind of a bummer. Uh, Microsoft made some big announcements that they had acquired um, a couple new studios to put under the Microsoft. Flag, they bought Undead Labs, which did the State of Decay games, most famously. Um, Playground Games, which uh, did Forza Horizon. And then uh, Ninja Theory, which did Heavenly Sword and Hellblade. And uh, Compulsion Games, which has the, the forever alpha game, We Happy Few. Which looks like a really cool game, and I was really excited uh, to play it when they announced it. I think it was either last year or the year before at E3. Uh, and then they are creating a new studio called The Initiative. And so they say they've got a bunch of top talent from that. Um, all of this, all of these game game studio purchases and create creations are to kind of stymie the, <laughs> the efforts of PlayStation, who's really been winning an exclusives race against Microsoft, but for me, I've always felt the exclusivity of games is just, it's really dumb, because the only only people that really pay for it are, you know, people that want to play these games, but maybe don't have the, the correct console to do so, so that that's kind of a bum deal. There was an announcement for a Tales of Vesperia. Or maybe it's a game that's already been released, uh, but it's, it's like the Ultimate Edition or something like that. It's like an anime game, maybe a lot of anime cutscenes. And The Division 2, they showed some, some pretty sweet footage for The Division 2, um, some gameplay for that as well. And, the, and the, the funny thing about gameplay at these showcases is it's, it's so incredibly staged. It's it's almost laughable to watch because of the way that, especially in multiplayer games where these people are communicating back and forth. I remember for um, Wild Wildlands. Uh, I remember for Anthem when they did that one, uh, and and then this one, The Division Two. That's not how people talk, and they just are making jokes the whole time. And so I, I mean, unless your friends are much more tactical than mine. They won't. They don't talk like the people in these in these showcases. Microsoft uh, they they hyped up their Game Pass uh, with a added feature called Fast Start and a learning algorithm that's going to really learn how players play and buy games. So you don't have to buy all the games, but you can play the ones that you want to play on on Game Pass. They added uh, some new ones at the showcase, so you can you can get onto Game Pass and get those now. And that's Fallout Four. Uh, they added the division and one more. It might have been a Dragon Age game. I'm not sure entirely. Um, the, the Game Pass, you know, I just I don't know about the Game Pass. Just like the EA Origins Premier Access, the Game Pass. I mean, I guess it's a little bit more. I don't know. Maybe some some sometime I'll get it. Maybe it could save me a lot of money if I just got that and didn't buy any more games. Just played the ones 
available on Game Pass, but most likely I'll want other other games as well. Uh, there was a quick kind of demo trailer, or just just kind of an advertisement trailer saying there's a bunch of games available on the Xbox Store now. Uh, games like Outer Worlds, After Party, Fringe Wars, Below, one called, called Harold Halibut, uh, Ashen, uh, a lot of different games, um, so that's kind of cool. I, if you watch any of the videos that I make, you know I'm, I'm kind of an Xbox guy. I do have the PlayStation. My wife got me a PlayStation 4, um, but I do play mostly on the Xbox, so I like to hear when there's good games coming to the, coming to the Xbox store. They showed a, a cool cinematic for uh, Shadow of the Tomb Raider. Now, Shadow of the Tomb Raider kind of falls in the same vein as the Nathan Drake series. What are those called? Uncharted. That's the name. That's the name of the games. Uh, the Nathan Drake Uncharted games. The same Tomb Raider game, kind of the action-y adventure platform game. I don't, you know, I'm just not that that into them. I mean, they look like good games, don't get me wrong. But I haven't uh, been interested in a, in a Tomb Raider game since... Shoot, I was a, a pre-adolescent and got excited by those very polygon-esque boobs uh, on Lara Croft. So I haven't, I haven't been excited about a Tomb Raider game in a long time. Everyone was hoping for a Skate 4 game. Uh, unfortunately, that didn't happen, but they did release a skateboarding game or, or previewed a skateboarding game called Sessions. And what's so funny is every time they released or, or announced a game that was exclusive they and before the preview played they said exclusive and so just to make sure that you knew that this was an exclusive game that xbox does does have the exclusives and they they really don't not not just yet anyway the same way they announced the exclusives, they announced uh, the world premiere. They they would say world premiere before. Um, obviously, they want to want to kind of build that up a, a little bit. But there was one called Black Desert that looked pretty cool. Uh, it was an MMORPG. So if you're into that th sort of thing, uh, they showed some uh, gameplay and some cinema for a new Devil May Cry game. And it is starring Sarah Palin, uh, or at least it looks to be. <laughs> I, I don't know, man. The the sidekick in the game looks like Sarah Palin, and it, it just cracked me up to see. Uh, Cuphead is getting some new DLC, The Delicious Last Course. And so Cuphead obviously is a game that I play here on this channel, so... Yeah, I'll, I'll be I'll be getting that DLC so I can play that. I love the art style on that one. It's beautiful, um, beautifully animated uh, art on on Cuphead. There was an adorable little platformer that they showcased there. It's called Tunic. You're a little fox and you you get a little sword and and you cut down little polygon trees. And well, the the design seemed really simple. The gameplay looked pretty damn good. Like it looked. It looked really smooth, a little little fight for this little fox that he as he traversed these 3D worlds. So that was kind of nice to see. I I don't know if I'll get it until it shows up on Games for Gold, where it inevitably will will make a a stand. But uh, it does look like a neat game. <laughs> One that they announced through almost an entire cinematic with no gameplay or very little gameplay was one called Jump Force. And it was just an orgy of these different anime characters. There was Naruto hanging out, Luffy from One Piece. I saw Goku from Dragon Ball Z. Uh, even even Light Yagami and Ryuk from Death Note made an appearance. And it was you know just another another in the vein of the Dragon Ball Xenoverse kind of fighting games, except with all of these these worlds colliding. Um, so cool in concept, I don't think it would be very engaging or have much replay value for me, uh, but I'll wait to see some more gameplay to make a real decision on that one. They dropped a trailer for Dying Light 2, and I never played the original Dying Light, but I guess it was really good, it was really fun, really action-packed, and really incredibly supported as well. Uh, there was a lot of... Uh, DLC and extra and bonus content that kept getting added and added to the game even even well after well after a normal game's life cycle or so it seemed it, and it was funny because I was watching the trailer and my wife peeked over and she looked and uh, it was just as some guy was getting his head smashed in and she goes ew no thank you <laughs> so she's not she's not gonna get it uh, 
but the they they talked about the game a little bit too, and the, the one of the developers or one of the the directors or whatever he was came out on stage and said, "Hey, look, you know this one's got really uh, transformative, you know uh, your choices have consequences sort of type type of gameplay here," and he he mentioned you know you go do a mission and you you don't steal this water from these water barons and then all of a sudden the whole district is in a drought. Or you you do take it from them. You now everyone's got water, but they live under the iron iron fist or, or thumb of the peacekeeper uh, folks. So real action. And he says there's hundreds of these types of decisions that can really affect the world that you live in. He says no two experiences are going to be the be the exact same. Uh, so it's kind of a bold claim, but by gosh, if if that's something that that could happen, I think that'd be pretty dang pretty dang cool. There was a <laughs> quick little teaser for. Battle Toads. They made a new, new Battle Toads game, or they're making a new Battle Toads game. So I'll be excited to see what that looks like. Whether they're just going to, you know, stay in the vein of the old, old impossible to beat Battle Toads, or if they're going to make make something a little more user friendly. Just Cause 4 was announced. I watched the trailer and I was kind of skipping back and forth through it, and I thought it was Black Ops 4 for a minute, but it was a four. Just, Just Cause 4. Cyberpunk 2077 got an extended cut of kind of trailer. So 2077 by CD Projekt Red, and, and this was kind of the the closer to the showcase. I've got a couple more games I'm going to talk about here afterwards, but um, the it it, it was uh, a long-awaited game from the same guys that brought you The Witcher, and so. Uh, I'm excited to see what that is. I, I never beat The Witcher, so I, I better you know do that at some point. But the text was too small for me. I just couldn't read it very well and enjoy myself. Uh, a couple other things. Um, a quick appearance by Kingdom Hearts 3, uh, Metro Exodus. Uh, I never played any of the other Metro, Metro games. Uh, Sekio Shadows Die Twice uh, made, a, made a spot appearance. Uh, they did announce some updates for... Uh, PUBG and Sea of Thieves, and then of course gave us some more more gameplay for Ori and the Will of the Wisps, which was nice because Ori and the Blind Forest was and is one of my favorite games. I mean, they, the art style is incredible, and they just kind of drug that art style into this game and, and made it. I, I don't know, it looks really amazing. They showed some of the new moves that Ori can do. And I'm excited to see where they go. I'm glad they, they sequeled that one out because it really was a good good game and deserved it. And a, as for the Microsoft uh, Xbox showcase for E3, like I said, it was a lot more filling than the EA showcase. So it had a little bit more bite to it. Um, so hopefully, uh, if you hadn't seen the showcases, this gave you a good idea what games you need to go look up and what trailers to look up now. There were also some cringy moments in this one, uh, just like there was in the EA one. Uh, but but take a look at the trailer. I will uh, drop the, not the trailer, but the actual showcase. I'll drop the one for GameSpot in the in the links section uh, down in the description below. And also, if you haven't seen it, here's... Uh, a tag or a in in sticker for the previous video for the EA showcase and uh, the vlog that I've hopefully got recorded at some point. Uh, I'll put a tag up for that one as well if you want to watch that. So I'll see you at the Bethesda showcase. All right, trolls. Now the next uh, next showcase that we have up is the uh, Bethesda showcase. Happened on the 10th as well as the Microsoft Showcase. Uh, they started off with a, a pretty pretty funny joke about Walmart Canada and their ability to uh, release games for them as Rage 2 was leaked by a Walmart store page. Uh, so that was pretty funny. And then there was this really, the, the developers for Rage 2, a couple of them came out on, on stage and it was a really weird height joke between uh, the two guys. One guy was really short, one guy was really tall and it kind of drug on so again we've been talking about those those cringe moments in e3 that are so so popular every year uh, i think that was a another one that's going to make those compilations um it looking at rage 2 it's always been the or the or the first rage was such a pretty game uh i would completely forgotten about it but rage 2 is a, is a very pretty game uh, i mean it's very violent very gory but 
uh, graphically, I mean the lighting effects, uh, just as you move through, the way your, your character moves and the way that, uh, you know, the physics happen when your bullets meet the enemy's flesh is, it's just, it's a really, really pretty dang game. Uh, they announced some, some interesting stuff, uh, Elder Scrolls Legends, which is a, uh, it's a mobile game, and, uh, so it's first person, first person game, you can, you know, run through these, these castles and dungeons and outdoors and, and fight, I, I don't know, I just have a hard time imagining that it's gonna work, work too well, I mean, if you, if you didn't see the showcase, go check out a preview for this Elder Scrolls Legends, uh, it's, a it's a mobile Elder Scrolls game, so, it's, it looks like Elder Scrolls, but, I don't feel like it's going to play play anything anything too well. Uh, speaking of Elder Scrolls, uh, they also did a big segment on uh, the Elder Scrolls Online. Uh, they're dropping a bunch of uh, DLC for that. And so if you're one of those Elder Scrolls Online folks, well then, by gosh, there's going to be some more content there for you. There's a card game too, I can't remember. An Elder Scrolls card game or something to like. Maybe that was in the Microsoft one. Any, any which way, uh, Doom is getting a sequel, Doom Eternal. I, I'm not sure if it's a sequel or if it's more uh, more DLC for the actual Doom game. Most likely though it's a sequel, it's called Doom Eternal. They didn't show any gameplay footage for it, just a cinematic with this really hellish landscape with all these, these big grotesque looking demons uh, wandering around. Uh, they are going to debut <laughs> debut more of that uh, or some of the gameplay for that at QuakeCon this year. Uh, so check out check out QuakeCon for more information on that one. Uh, Wolfenstein uh, Wolfenstein the New Colossus uh, that the Wolfenstein sequel is getting a port to the Nintendo Switch so all you Switch players that have been waiting for that there's that. They also have announced a, a new Wolfenstein uh, campaign or a new uh, new game called Young Blood, which is a co-op game. You play as the protagonist from the previous Wolfenstein games as his his daughters uh, in the in the game. Well, you and a friend play as his twin daughters in in the game. Prey Two is getting some uh, DLC called Moon Crash. Uh, and then I, I don't, I made a note here, uh, that says more cringe humor there, but I forgot what the, what the prey, to, oh no, what it was, was the, uh, some of the staff for the game, they did a video where the video cut out early because they were being attacked by something, and then they came out on stage, and there was this really awkward moment where, uh, the dude, he wrote on a sticky note, not a mimic, and then he put that sticky note on the other, uh, on this lady developer on her, on her shirt, and they were like, no mom, don't worry, I'm not a mimic, and I guarantee neither of those people's mothers play Prey or Prey 2, so it was just uh, another one, another one for the old compilation there. Uh, Quake Champions, uh, I, I didn't really understand what this preview was about, but it's, uh, they showcased some Quake Champions and said, hey look, Quake is the original esports game. Uh, the game didn't look all that great, great to me, but hey, you know what? What are you gonna do? Oh, before I forget, uh, for Rage 2, uh, Spring uh, 2019 is the release date for that. And then, uh, you know, Todd Howard came out. Um, they saved all the really big guns for him, of course. Uh, I, I mean, he came out. He was talking about the Elder Scrolls Legends and stuff like that. But he came out. Oh, I have I've really screwed up here. The Elder Scrolls Legends was the card game. The Elder Scrolls Blades is the mobile game that I was talking about earlier. Elder Scrolls Legends is the is the card game. So uh, I hope you didn't go out and buy the wrong one because of this information that I gave you two minutes ago. But I've corrected it, so there's there's that. <clears throat> anyway, Todd Howard comes out and everyone cheers and is very excited to see Todd because Todd always brings with him big news, or at least he has for the last couple of couple of years. And so he came out and you know he just he said, hey, you know, here's Fallout 76. You guys saw the trailer. Here's some some gameplay footage, and he he showed us some uh, new cinematics for that and some gameplay footage. And he did 
He did make some mentions. You know, we were all kind of concerned it was going to be an Elder Scrolls Online type game, but he kind of allayed those fears a little bit because he said, yes, it is online all the time, uh, multiplayer, all the people you see in the wasteland are going to be other real people. However, you can play the game solo. There's a solo quest, uh, so you can you can take that on by yourself. He did say it would probably be more difficult without helping with friends. And so it, they've really doubled down on the settlement building aspect of Fallout 4. Um, although in this one, you'll be able to build settlements wherever, not just in the locations um, that the game allows you to. They... Uh, they did mention, or, or the, the GameSpot uh, folks mentioned afterwards, that this was a mod that was available in Fallout 4. Uh, so when people modded it, they made it so you could build settlements anyway. But this is from the, the vanilla game going in. Uh, Fallout 76 will have settlement building wherever, wherever you want. Uh, they are, for the first time, doing a beta because it is going to... Uh, <laughs> It is going to be online, and so Todd gave some acronym for the beta. It was like break it, everything, uh, testing assurance or something. I don't know what it was, but it was pretty pretty funny. Uh, Fallout 76 is going to be available on November 14th of this year, 2018. So that's kind of exciting. Um, I do enjoy the fact that Bethesda releases some of these big titles with like, hey, here it is, the announcement, and then boom, a couple months later, it's the it's the game. So that's kind of kind of nice. Although they then talked about Fallout uh, Shelter is coming to Nintendo Switch and PS4. Xbox already has it. It's already on PC. It's already on the mobile uh, and the tablets. They said there's been more people that have played Fallout Shelter than any other Bethesda game. It was like 120 million people have played uh, Fallout Shelter, which is it's nuts, nuts bananas. Um, then they they. They dropped the teases for the two two really big ones that everyone's been anticipating. Uh, Starfield. They gave a quick, you know, thirty second tease of uh, cinematic. It panned away from a, a moon onto a satellite, and then it got warped into a black hole. So that was kind of cool. Uh, they did confirm that it was for next generation consoles. So I don't know if we can take that as kind of a a hint that coming soon will be that that PlayStation 5 news or that Xbox 2 news or whatever whatever's coming next around the corner for us us console peasants and then uh, at the end of it uh, he also you know got the audience all hyped up and they were all jacked about um, uh, another quick teaser he showed for Elder Scrolls 6 and so Elder Scrolls 6 is coming they're working on it um, so that I, you know, I've always been more of a Fallout guy as opposed to an Elder Scrolls guy, but uh, that should be a fun game. I still haven't beat Skyrim, so they've got time. They've got time. They can wait. They can put that off as long as they want. Uh, and that was it for the Bethesda showcase. Uh, I did uh, find a find a stream for the Devolver Digital showcase that happened uh, right after that. And uh, Devolver Digital, it it wasn't a live event. It was a streamed event. And I, I, I didn't see last year's, but I'm going to have to go find video of it and watch it because it was the funniest satire of a, a E3 showcase or these kind of j games showcases. And it, 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 the, the, I'm sorry, I'm tripping all over my words here. And the CEO or the actress that was playing the CEO came out and snapped some dude's neck and then called her son up to debut their little classic Devolver Digital game console, which was a, a painted Sega Sega Dreamcast or Sega Genesis, and then she uh, she killed him somehow, she shot him, and then the audience was all very excited about this, and there were children in the audience, and uh, <laughs> they they made, made mention of loot boxes were very popular, and Bitcoin has seen a incredible... Uh, attack on the market with this cryptocurrency thing and so they were going to introduce a uh, loot box coin which was the next big thing and uh, they did introduce a couple of games though they talked about Metal Wolf Chaos which I guess was a game for the Xbox I never played it but it looks like it's still on the Xbox it's not very you know attractive and uh, <laughs> there was another game they, they did which was uh, Scum 
It's a survival game, it looks like. Um, showed a guy running, he got shot, uh, or shot at. Then a giant mech warrior came and shot his attacker, then stepped on him, and then he was reanimated as a zombie, so that was kind of, kind of interesting. Uh, and then... Uh, a game that looks really, really cool. It's it's called My Friend Pedro. I could best describe it as a 2D gun dancing game because they played like this classical opera music and it's a 2D side scroller. This guy is dancing through it with guns in either hand and he's just mowing over these bad guys. Uh, a lot of really cool physics stuff with that game. Uh, but I'm, I, <laughs> I may have to check it out. It should be a cheap one on the old Xbox store there. You know, one of those $7.99 or, or $10 games, which which I would be, you know, I, I'd be uh, more more so inclined to get than if it were a full-priced $60 game, which I doubt it will be, but it, it looks very funny. So, uh, that's it for Devolver Digital, and thus ends this video. Uh, so, if you did like this video, leave a like on the video. Subscribe to this channel if you're not already. I haven't been making many videos for it, but, but I am starting up again with these E3 videos. I think it's a good kind of way to, to get back into it and dip my toe back into the waters of online video game making, uh, online video game video uh, making creation there. Uh, also, if you didn't see the previous E3 2018 recap, uh, you can check that out here. Uh, and then if I've got the next one up, you can also check that out here. Also, I should have put a tag up sometime in the video, but if I did not, uh, there's a there's a tag for the vlog, which will come out um, far, far after these videos on my other channel. So until next time, we'll see you tomorrow at the uh, Square Enix uh, showcase. All right, so next up was the Square Enix showcase, and uh, th this one was kind of interesting. Um, it was the first one to be shown on the 11th, and it was done all uh, by pre-recorded um, gameplay footage. I mean, there was no hosts or anything. It was just like, stay tuned for the PlayStation, or not the PlayStation, the Square Enix Showcase. Here it is, the Square Enix Showcase. I hope you enjoyed the Square Enix Showcase. Um, they started off by showing some really cool, cool footage for Shadow of the Tomb Raider. Uh, and that's available September 14th, 2018. Uh, and I, I wasn't a big big fan of this game or very excited about this game, but watching the, uh, the gameplay in some of these different showcases, uh, it's, it's grown on me. It looks, it looks pretty, dang, pretty dang neat. I mean, all of these games are looking so beautiful. I, uh, I, I would have otherwise not been interested in a lot of them, but the, the, graphically, they're just, they're just amazing. Uh, unfortunately, uh, well, I'm just going to cut to the chase here. There was no Final Fantasy VII remake footage or announcements or anything like that. It was a complete no-show at the showcase, so I'm kind of bummed about that. But, uh, hey, you know, that's that's how it goes, I guess. Uh, Final Fantasy XIV, uh, they, they announced some more DLC for that under the moonlight if you're a Final Fantasy XIV player. I wasn't wasn't a I never played Final Fantasy 14. I didn't play the other online Final Fantasy either. I think it was Final Fantasy 11. Um, but it looks pretty dang cool, man. If I was kind of an online guy that that was not afraid of getting super addicted and completely ignoring my family, I may enjoy some Final Fantasy 14. Uh, so they announced that DLC. They also uh, announced a Final Fantasy 14. Uh, by Monster Hunter kind of crossover uh, and that's going to happen uh, sometime this summer summer 2018 uh, I've been saying Square Enix uh, wrong for a long time it's Square Enix Square Enix is how you it's how you pronounce it and watching these showcases on YouTube just something to, to point out if you, you didn't watch the showcases the YouTube chat is a mess and I imagine the Twitch chat was a mess too. Like it just, it flies by. There's no chance you have of reading anything. It's just a tornado of the the most smart ass comments. I mean, I threw a couple in there. Just whoop, there it goes. Um, but it was gone before I could even see it. So um, just kind of a, a comment there on the YouTube uh, comments. 
Uh, there was a, a, a preview for Captain Spirit. Uh, it's a, a free game uh, in the vein of Life is Strange, or it's a sequel to or a spinoff of Life is Strange, but it is free and it is available on June 26, 2018. Uh, Dragon Quest, they announced some... some it, it's not a, a DLC, but it's a uh, Dragon Quest XI, I believe. Uh, Echoes of an Elusive Age. Uh, available September 4th, uh, 2018, and so I guess it's available now in Japan, but that's when it's coming to uh, America, so I haven't played a Dragon Quest game in a long time, but I remember having a lot of fun with, I think it was Dragon Quest 7, and I wouldn't be opposed to hopping back into a Dragon Quest game and, and getting my hands hands dirty on some Dragon Quest, Dragon Questing. <laughs> uh, Babylon's Fall, really cool. Uh, preview there. It was it was kind of weird. There's like these two large knights, and then one of them was gonna kill the other one. The, the bigger one was gonna kill the littler one, but then the littler one had these like little red ribbons shoot out of it and cut off the bigger one's arm, and then kill the bigger one with its own arm and sword. Um, so that was kind of neat. I don't I don't uh, recall seeing any gameplay footage for it, but it was kind of neat. And that's going to be available next year in 2019. Babylon's Fall. Uh, is a, a, a cool looking game. <laughs> I read my same note twice. Whoops. Uh, Near uh, Near Automata, uh, which was a PlayStation exclusive, is coming to the Xbox One, the Something Gods edition. Uh, so with all the DLC and everything, that'll be uh, really cool. Uh, it's coming on June 26th as well. I ha have been waffling back and forth on whether I want to get Near on. Uh, the PlayStation, but now I don't have to waffle anymore because I can get it right on the Xbox. So hopefully that's not too terribly expensive. Uh, they announced a Switch game, Octopath Traveler, which looks just like a kind of RPG, RPG type. Um, a lot of really cool character customization options in relation to job class, much akin to Final Fantasy Tactics, where there were job classes in that one. However, with this one, it's a much different combat system. It's kind of your classic uh, JRPG, you know, you get into a fight, and then and then you, you fight them from the side there, take turns, that sort of thing. Uh, anyway, that's available on July 13th, 2018. There was a kind of a weird trailer for The Quiet Man. Uh, it was this dude, he goes into an alleyway, and it was weird because in this trailer, I wasn't sure if it was like live action interspersed with uh, 3D models. But they went into the alleyway, and then there's these two two gangster guys, you know, just kind of sitting down on a stoop, and they're like, "Hey, you're in the wrong place." And I wasn't sure if they were um, live action. They look they look kind of live action. But he comes in, and, and they're like, "Hey, you're in the wrong place." And he's like, he points to his ear. He's like, "I can't hear you." Well, he doesn't say that, but he points to his ear. And then they're like, oh, okay. And then they get up and they're going to beat him up. And then he beats them up instead. And then he sets their uh, his little lunch bag he got on their head uh, after, he, after, after he beats them up. So that was kind of a weird one. Um, they said there's going to be more info on that game in August. So there's no gameplay. It was just a cinematic. So, so we'll see what, what goes on there. Uh, and then, uh, of course, they, they showed some more footage for Kingdom Hearts. And uh, they showed a little little bit of a tease with uh, Elsa and from Frozen, uh, Elsa of Arendelle, uh, Arendelle, and then Anna of Arendelle. I don't know if they showed her, but they 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 teased kind of that you know Elsa is kind of wavering between the dark side and the light side, which is really cool because it really fits with her her story from her movie. And so it's it's nice how they they kind of wove that in into this this game apparently, and then uh, Sora is talking about uh, some other character from another Kingdom Hearts game being in him in his heart, and uh, I know there's been 18 iterations of Kingdom Hearts, and there's been DS games and Game Boy games and you know card games and all kinds of spinoffs. And I have not played all of those. I played Kingdom Hearts 1, I played Kingdom Hearts 2. So I have a feeling 
that I'm going to be incredibly confused once uh, this Kingdom Hearts 3 game is released. Uh, so that's all the updates that I have for the Square Enix showcase. It was a good one. It was a quick one. It was kind of nice not having the uh, suits, you know, sit up there and, and talk and make cringeworthy jokes uh, with each other. Uh, so it was a good, good, quick little showcase. And if you haven't seen any of the other showcases, you can uh, check out some of those links here on a, a tag or a sticker at the end. Um, also, uh, hopefully, at some point, I'll be getting the vlog out from our trip. So if you want to check out uh, the actual adventure, you can check that out on my other channel right uh, up here. Uh, but otherwise, we'll see you at the next showcase. <laughs> all right, all right, trolls. Next up on uh, 6 11 as well, June 11th, was the Ubisoft showcase. Now, the Ubisoft showcase started with a dancing panda and a whole dancing number that moved on to the main stage, and it was just a a prelude to the announcement of Just Dance 2019. And so th this was a theme during the whole Ubisoft showcase where there was there was way too much live show. Now I don't mind a little bit of a you know announcement here and uh, you know featured featured uh, gameplay mechanic here or or whatever. But when it, it's just it's host after host after host talking and talking and talking. I I, I don't know. I mean. I know what the showcases are, they're there to showcase the games. I'd like to see the games, uh, I'd like to see a gameplay, I'd like to see cool cinematics, but um, a little little too much live show and not enough games for at least at least my case. But uh, Just Dance 2019 is coming out, so if you're interested in that. Um, let's see, uh, they did a announcement for Assassin's Creed Odyssey, which is uh, the one set, uh, you're a Spartan, I believe. And you uh, you get a, you get to choose whether you want to be a male or a female this time, so that's kind of nice. Um, I, I imagine these kinds of games, these Assassin's Creed games, are really fun games for history buffs because you get to meet all these historical characters. I am not such a historian that it it makes much much sense or much meaning to me. I'm just like, hey, these are pretty well well rounded, fleshed out NPCs, you know. Uh, it looks like a cool game though. All the Assassin's Creed games have been pretty cool. I, I've only probably played, last one I probably played was like two or three. Um, but in this one you get to fight a Minotaur, so that looks kind of cool. Or at least it, it teased that you do. Uh, they did more, gave you more information about Beyond Good and Evil 2. And showed off some of the, some of the mechanics there. Uh, they introduced a, a thing called the Space Monkey Program, which is uh, being <laughs> part. There's like a partnership with uh, Joseph Gordon-Levitt and uh, one of his. I can't remember the name of his company right now, but uh, wherein if you want to provide art, uh, you know, like street art and graffiti or you want to provide songs and music or collaborate on songs, music, or art for this game, you can do that through this company to get your your art kind of immortalized in in this game, which is kind of cool on the surface, but then I read a comment that, that made a really good point, and it said, yeah, because, you know, screw paying your artists and your musicians. So I don't know if that's the case if you don't get some kind of compensation for helping them out. Or if it's just some uh, free sourcing, crowdsourcing sort of situation where you contribute, get nothing in return, and they get a better, more uh, well-rounded game because of your contributions. Uh, the the game looks amazing. It looks like a movie. Uh, it's a, I, I never played Beyond Good and Evil, the first one, so I'll have to see if I can find that somewhere to play it before I play this one, if it's really necessary. If not, I'll just jump in and play this one because it looks really cool. Uh, they talked a lot about the flight mechanics. Um, you know, you're flying as a little person with a jetpack, or you're flying in in the big pirate ship, or you're flying in a uh, little tiny little tiny fighter. Uh, but it looks like a really cool cool game coming out. Uh, Skull and Bones. They showed some um, gameplay footage from Skull and Bones coming out in 2019. Uh, now, the comparison's often been made uh, between Skull and Bones and Sea of Thieves, 
and that they're you know they're the same game or they're they're too similar. Sea of Thieves, I, I play that game, I enjoy that game. Is it's a really it's like a it's like a ship simulator. Like you you do every part of steering this ship. Whereas in Skull and Bones, it looks like you know you're one person and you do everything from the helm. You're just switching back back and forth to different posts. Um, so it might be a little more uh, simple to run run the ships in Skull and Bones, uh, and and that's not a bad thing. I mean, it looks it looks like really fun naval combat. Uh, you get cannons on the front of your ship, which you don't have in Sea of Thieves, so that's that's kind of nice too. Uh, let's see. Uh, they talked about uh, Rainbow Six Siege. Um, they did like a weird documentary on these esports players. One guy broke his arm, but because he broke his arm, it was a chance for him to be introduced to Rainbow Six Siege. And uh, they said something like 36 million uh, players on Rainbow Six Siege, which is amazing to me. I, I I don't find the appeal in that game, but hey, maybe that's just me. Uh, they're they talked about Trials Rising. It's a motorbike game, like a, a, a dirt bike, you know, trick, BMX sort of thing. Well, BMX is bikes, isn't it? Anyway, uh, Trials Rising is coming out. The Division 2, um, they did some more more information on that. There was a, another Division 2 and another showcase. I think it was Microsoft did, did more Division 2. But they talked about there being raids. And then they also talked about in the first year that that game is out, they're going to offer three expansions to it that are completely free, which is kind of cool. You know, uh, some people would say, hey, it'd be cool if they'd release a full game on launch without having to update it. But, you know, uh, free is better than nothing. And if it takes you that long to beat the, the base game, too, I mean, I don't see any harm in it. Mario Plus Rabbits is getting a Donkey Kong DLC update. Uh, so I, I love that game. <laughs> My wife has it for the Switch, and I played it played it not to completion, but very nearly to completion. And it's a it's a fun dang game, man. Um, so I'm excited about that. Uh, Transference. Then Elijah Wood came out. So Ubisoft was a very star studded event too, because uh, you had Joseph Gordon Levitt, and then you had Elijah Wood come out, and he talked about a game that he was doing called Transference. Uh, it's kind of a weird. There was a lot. There was a couple live action uh, actors in there, and they were talking about it, and they kind of interspersed it with um, some of the 3D models. And it was a good, good looking game. It was weird looking. I mean, the environment just flat. Like there'd be a, a dining room, and then it'd be empty, and then it flash and it'd have some balloons in it from like a party, and then it flash and you're in a hallway, and some creepy weird stuff was happening. I don't really know what is going on there with that game. I need to see a little bit more. But that's coming out fall of 2018. Uh, then they they made uh, some announcements for the Crew 2, which looks like a racing game, but you can, you can get in uh, helicopters and boats and jet skis and cars and all kinds of stuff. So that looks neat. They announced some DLC for For Honor. Uh, it's called Marching Fire. Uh, they also said that the standard edition of uh, For Honor will be free on a PC. Uh, October 16th or maybe that's now and then the Marching Fire DLC comes out on October 16th uh, but with the Marching Fire they're adding uh, Chinese characters uh, to it so you got another another class to compete with the Samurais and the Vikings and the Knights uh, so that's kind of cool uh, the thing about free games um, at these E3's I don't know if it's becoming popular but it's, it's looking like kind of a pattern to me that they are announcing uh, games that are, are they're like, and today you'll be able to get it free. Um, so e either old games or, or games that uh, are, are coming out, there, there's a lot of free games. So if you pay attention during E3 um, for the, the consoles and systems that you have, uh, you have a real potential of walking away with some good, good free games if you're paying attention. Uh, and then the, the last one was Starlink. And this was, and this was uh, kind of a, a cool uh, spaceship, uh, space fighter game, and it, it's coming out October 16th. The weird thing was, in between all of the gameplay footage, they put 
on on the the PlayStation remotes like these amiibo looking Starship toys. And so I'm not really sure what that was all about, but um, the. I don't know if, if they're needed to play the game or if they just enhanced the game, but they were taking pieces on and off, and then the, in the game, the ships were, you know, getting cluster missiles added and boosters added and taken away as they were adjusting the, the toy. So it looked like a cool game without those, so, so I hope it's not required to play the game. And then in, partway during the trailer, there was a, uh, a reveal for Star Fox. Uh, so Star Fox and the boys are back back and but they're in Starlink and so they're playable characters on the Nintendo Switch only for the, the that version of the game uh, but Starlink looks pretty dang cool as well a uh, lot of a lot of games uh, Ubisoft was a good good presentation it was longer than it needed to be because there was a lot of people in the middle of my games damn it so anyway hopefully you enjoyed uh, that video that's it for the Ubisoft showcase if you did uh, like the video if you're not already subscribed to the channel, if you'd like to see some of the other showcases, you can click on on here or, or these tags up here. And if uh, by this time uh, I've got the vlog done, because my wife and I are down here in California uh, looking to go to E3 on the 12th, uh, if that's done, you can check out that here as well. Uh, but otherwise, we'll see you at the next showcase, which is, I believe, Sony Showcase. No, it's PC Gaming Showcase. I may or may not do a video on that one because it was terrible. All right, until next time. All right, welcome back. Uh, we're going to talk a little bit about the PC gaming show now. Uh, this show was terrible. I, I can't decide whether uh, the EA showcase was worse or this PC gaming show was worse. Uh, they said they were going to announce 30 games. I missed some of them because they were just so bad. Uh, but I'm just gonna I'm just gonna rattle off this list. This isn't going to be a long section uh, for this showcase. There was Satisfactory, and it was it's a survival game. Looks like a, a building game. Build these big machine things. That it, it looked like a pretty cool game. I don't have a PC though, so I won't be playing it. Uh, the next one was Neo Cab. It, uh, it's an Uber simulator, so <laughs> it's a text-based game. Uh, then Mavericks Proving Grounds is a battle royale with a thousand players. And that, I, is, there's going to be so many more battle royale, royale games before this genre dies. <laughs> uh, Forgotten City, uh, apparently this was a mod of some kind, and it's, this is a remaster of that mod for that game. But in it, there's people that are, if they commit, any one of them commits a sin, they all turn to gold or something along those lines. Uh, one called uh, Star Control. It's kind of a lo-fi No Man's Sky, so um, just kind of a, a cheapy version of that, it looks like. Then Hunt Showdown uh, is super slow looking. Uh, it's a FPS. You get kind of old school weapons, it looks like. Uh, Archangel Hellfire is a mech battle game uh, so that looks kind of kind of cool but uh, again you know the graphics kind of kind of suck on it and everything else uh the sinking city a uh, lovecraftian kind of uh noir detective tale uh, warframe uh it's got a it's a, a dlc coming out i believe it's called the sacrifice and warframe's a free game and it's also it's uh, uh at the pc gaming showcase here but i know I've seen it on Xbox as well. Should I get Warframe? Uh, I don't. I'm not not familiar. Uh, Killing Floor Two. It's either DLC or a new game. Um, it's got got a bunch of scary looking clowns on a blimp. I know my cousin plays the Killing Floor, so maybe he'll enjoy that. Uh, the next one is Man Eater. <laughs> it's it's a you you play as a shark, and you go to eat people off their boats and docks and things. And when the guy was describing it at the showcase, he said it was an open-world RPG. <laughs> so I don't know what that what that means, but it looked terrible. Uh, Overwhelm uh, looks like a 2D side-scroller game, like a roguelike sort of sort of game. Looked actually pretty dang good, man. And a lot of the physics in it reminded me of an old game I used to play with my brother called Lero. Uh, these two worms were fighting each other. Uh, the next one is Jurassic World Evolution. Looked terrible. 
uh, Stormland, an open world VR game. Uh, Night Call is a, another text based kind of noir style uh, investigative game. Uh, Sable, it, it looks like an older game. It's cell shaded, kind of, uh, but it just graphically it doesn't stand up. Star Citizen, um, uh, they showed some footage for Star Citizen, not gameplay footage, but just cinematics. Uh, all of it apparently was captured in engine though. Um, and it, I guess, has been in development for a long time. And reading through the comments as the showcase was going on, uh, a lot of people refer to it as Scam Citizen. Like, this game is never going to come out. It's just a game that's kickstarted, and they just wanted to make some money off of it, and they're just showing these cinematics. Um, so I, I don't know if it's actually coming out. Uh, if, it, if it does, I don't know what the game's about, so I can't say anything more on it. Uh, the next one is Genesis Alpha 1 Alien Attack Game. Uh, it is an alien attack game. It looks like uh, Prey a little bit. Uh, Don't Starve, an expansion uh, to that has happened. It's Hamlet. I guess it's introduced some town uh, mechanics into the game. Just Cause 4, which we've seen at other uh, pressers here. Um, so that game looks fun. I mean, on, regardless of what system you're playing it on. Overkills The Walking Dead. Uh, comes out on November 4th. That game actually looks pretty good. Uh, Noida. What? Oh, it's a pixelated side scroller. Maybe Noida was the one I was thinking of and not Overwhelm. It's either Noida or Overwhelm that look pretty dang cool. Uh, Two Point Hospital. It's kind of a weird top down Sims style. You build this hospital and you treat these patients with these really weird diseases that come in. Uh, then they announced Realm Royale, and if you couldn't guess by the title, yes, it is another Battle Royale game. Uh, so this one is kind of different, though, in that you can choose character classes like Mage and Knight and Engineer and those sorts of things, and they all have special mechanics that they can use in the game. Uh, and then they had a, uh, a Cyanide and Happiness game was announced. I don't have a PC, but I really wish I did so I could play this game. Um... So hopefully, you know, my cousin will play it or, or my buddy will play it. They've got PCs. It's called Rapture Rejects. And the, <laughs> the, the opening cinematic for it was pretty funny because all these people are getting raptured and this guy's praying to, praying to God, but it turns out he doesn't get raptured. His buddy is in the rapture light and he's just hitting the ceiling over and over again. He's like, hey, could I get a little help? So he drags him over to the window and lets him get raptured. Um, it's, it looks like it's kind of a top-down shooter game. Uh, where you just go bananas after after the rapture during the apocalypse. Oh, so it looks fun. And then Hitman 2 uh, announced for a release on November the 13th this year. So if you're a Hitman uh, guy or gal, well, by gosh, they got the game for you. Anyway, that is the PC Gaming Showcase. That was almost uh, painful a video to make as it was to watch the showcase. I watched it, so you don't have to. Now, if you want to watch any of the other showcases, you can uh, go ahead and and click on any of these uh, tags or tabs here and also if by this time I've got the vlog done uh, I'll throw a tag up for that so you can check that out the wife and I are down here at E3 and we're we're kicking it so um, check out the vlog and our adventure all right anyway I will talk to you at the next uh, next showcase All right, welcome back, trolls. You know, it continues to be a safe place to be here in a E3 2018 week. Uh, we are going to talk about the Sony press conference or showcase on the 11th of June. It was the last one of the day. And uh, so, yeah, let's talk a little bit about PlayStation. So the the way they did the, the, the showcase was really, it was strange they did it in two separate places. They started out in what the guy kept calling a church, which was kind of a weird weird thing to do, but he did it. And then they moved to another larger arena with a big screen, like, like it's kind of, kind of normal for these sorts of things. But uh, it started with um, a really cool cinematic cutscene for The Last of Us 2, followed by some Last of Us 2 trailer, and then moving back into that kind of cutscene. Uh, had a... Uh, uh, Ellie, the main the main protagonist, and she was kissing another girl, so I'm sure that will upset, um, you know, about half of the population of the United States. <laughs> um, but man, that that gameplay is 
brutal. Oh my gosh, that game is its so visceral and just violent. And uh, it's its seamless. Like, I, I, out of all the, all the showcases, all of the games that I'm going to talk about during this show, the showcase review, uh, Sony had the prettiest games, man. And they had the best graphics and the, the most smooth, seamless games. So, um, The Last of Us 2 was uh, amazing looking. And then um, they they did a Death Stranding. Um, so the, the Hideo Kojima game uh, with uh, Daryl from The Walking Dead. And that game is weird as hell. Uh, you're like a delivery guy. And you just are walking along, delivering things, and there's like these invisible ghosts, and then you're carrying along a, a unborn fetus baby that you can reincarnate into or something. I don't know, man. It is weird looking, um, but it looks looks really cool. Uh, another game that, that they showed was Ghosts of Tsushima. It is probably the prettiest game I have ever seen. The effects, I mean, they had these falling leaves at one point, these these blowing uh, sunflowers in the wind, uh, or it was wheat, maybe, I don't know, it was yellow, and um, the, the fire effects, uh, it, was, it was amazing, it's a samurai game, so... Oh, cool weather effects like the wind. Uh, these two two samurais are fighting it out in in this pile of leaves, and as they're moving through the leaves, they're separating, and just so many things happening on screen to to kind of amount to a real gorgeous gorgeous game. Uh, they they showed some more gameplay footage from uh, Insomniac's Spider Man. And that game, I watched that whole trailer with my mouth just wide open because it was, it was amazing gameplay. Uh, it looked cinematic. I'm, it it reminds me of, of course, like the Batman Arkham games when you're fighting these groups of bad guys. But the variation in combat during each one of these fights is just incredible. I don't know how they did it or how it's going to be able, how you're going to be able to play it and get that degree of uh, variation without some serious mastery behind that controller. But that looks like a good good dang game. Uh, there was a, uh, a, during one of the little interludes, uh, they, they went back to these announcers, and that was kind of an awkward thing. Uh, they, they showcased uh, a game called Dreams, and it looks like it's PlayStation's response to uh, a game that Xbox had made a while ago called, I think it was Spark, where it's like these world-building world creators, uh, but it looks a lot more intuitive, uh, a lot more uh, simple, and um, a lot more, uh, I guess you could go in-depth um, and, and create a great degree of variation within your creations. So I'm, I'm looking forward to that. I think my son would have a lot of fun building, building these worlds. Uh, they talked a little bit about uh, Black Ops 3 uh, releasing some remastered maps. I am not a Black Ops guy, so I never played these maps. But I guess if you are um, and you like them, they're releasing those. Um, and they're also releasing Black Ops 3 for free. So if you don't have Black Ops 3 already, I think I mentioned it in one of the uh, previous showcases. Um, they're giving away a lot of free games during, during uh, E3. Now... I didn't see them, uh, but the, the announcers talked about, in the lead-up to the showcase, they talked about uh, several different games, The Tetris Effect, Days Gone, Twin Mirror, Ghost Giant, which is a VR game, and Beat Saber, which is another VR game. Now, they did a whole little, little video montage about the different PlayStation VR games, and I gotta say, PlayStation VR looks pretty dang neat. Uh, if I have a couple extra hundred dollars lying around at some point, I may have to go check out a uh, PlayStation VR uh, headset to see what, see what that's all about. There was another VR game they, they talked about, uh, Diracene, and it's kind of a, a mystic, a weird, spooky game. They showcased some pretty cool uh, Destiny 2 DLC, so I, I know uh, my buddy... My buddy, my cousin, uh, Good Chaos, I'll tag him up here, he um, he plays Destiny 2, and so this one's called Forsaken, and it comes out on the 4th of September, 
And then uh, a really cool game uh, called Control. And it looks a lot like Blame. I mean, the protagonist has this this weird gun that is kind of pulsating with the with the noise of the environment. And they're in this world or this house or this area, this complex that changes, just like Blame. Uh, the in the mega structure, Blame's an anime and manga. If if you're not picking up what I'm what I'm throwing out there, um, but you're you as the protagonist, you've got like telekinetic powers. You've got this gun you can shoot, and then there's weird horror like things that are happening. It looks really really cool. Uh, and, and then uh, two more games. Uh, one is uh, Trover saves the universe. Uh, I guess it's done uh, by the same guys that did Rick and Morty. In fact. Um, you could hear uh, Morty's voice in one of the characters. I mean, he the the voice actor uh, is it uh, Harmon, Phil Harmon, maybe. Um, he he did the the voice for this character Trover. I assume is who he's who he's talking about. And there's this really weird kind of segue with this guy that was in a bathtub. He's like, hey, what do I know? I'm I'm just a bathtub guy. So <laughs> it looks pretty funny. Uh, VR game. Uh, and then they showed more footage uh, for Kingdom Hearts 3. I think this is the third showcase that they've shown uh, Kingdom Hearts 3 in. So they showed um, uh, a series, uh, like a montage of the different bad guys talking about how, you know, the darkness is right or the Order 13 or whatever they are. Again, like I said in the previous showcase, uh, I don't know if I'll be able to understand the Kingdom Hearts 3 story at this point, but I am going to play the hell out of it because it looks awesome. Uh, and this one was a lot, uh, it showed a lot of footage of the Pirates of the Caribbean world. So uh, Sora and the gang were out there cruising around in the desert in a boat. Um, and and that was that was it for the, the PlayStation lineup. Like I said before, the Sony showcase had some of the best looking games i'm i am going to rate these showcases at the end of it uh to tell you which ones i thought were the best in terms of presentation which ones i thought were the best in terms of games and which ones i thought were the best overall uh looking at all aspects of the showcase so uh until uh next time uh which is going to be the nintendo showcase on the 12th uh that's it for for this video if you did like it leave a thumbs up on the video subscribe to the channel if you're not already uh, i'm going to put up some some tags some in, in credit splashes here for the other showcases if you miss them and i don't know if i'll have it up yet but uh, once i do i will make sure to come back to this video and put a a, a tag up for our vlog because the wife and i are down here for the week of e3 and um, we've been kind of recording our adventures so uh, hopefully you'll you'll check that out on my other channel as well. Well, until next time.